introducing you to this newer show that we put together called The Enlightened Passenger. The idea behind the show is simply asking guests what they would tell a stranger on a plane if they were sitting next to them and the stranger asked them for advice. The scenery is passing very fast, but the seer is constant. The one who's seeing is the same. Let me appreciate you for asking a question that I haven't been asked after 2,500 or so uh, interviews over the years. Uh, you have to drop the EGO, which is everyone's greatest obstacle. In 2008, Grant and I had been married for four years. I was pregnant with my first child. Um, we, the economy was collapsing and we were on the verge of losing everything financially. And so I'm really excited to be back with another edition of this brand new show uh, where we really, it's a shorter uh, episode and shorter show uh, structure than my other show. So I usually jump right in because I only get to ask usually two or three questions, maybe four. So I'm really excited to have a guest with me today that I've interviewed in the past. I know he's going to over deliver. Uh, so John Tallarico, I'm so excited to have you here today. And John, with my other show, we usually ask the person to tell us a bit about themselves, but I did that off the top for this show uh, because okay. I want to jump right in. So I'm going to jump in with a really big question right off the bat. And so I want to talk to you first about this idea of legacy. You know, we hear this word legacy often. Uh, I will give mm -hmm. some context. Uh, I hear people often say legacy will be determined after I'm gone or behind my back. Or mm -hmm. I hear other people say I get to choose it because I'll make decisions that will determine what my legacy will be, meaning I'm more intentional with it. I'd love to get your take on legacy and which approach you take to it. Yeah, no, great question, Corey, and uh, wonderful to be back. Love you, love your crowd, love your audience, love what you do. Uh, for me, I think legacy is what we do each and every day. It's something that we actually, it's uh, something that never ends, even though maybe when we physically change form, I think it's something that we do on a daily basis. And then you start to ask yourself, would I want to do what I'm about to do right now for the day? And so I believe that it's something that we create and it gets continued every day that we continue to create it as we go. Um, but I think it also starts with having a very clear intention, uh, Corey, of what you want your legacy to be. Uh, you know, you are very uh, clear, I think, on yours of what you're doing to help transform and change people's life. lives. That's what we do. We uh, are working to make sure that people have hope. They have to have the tools and strategies and techniques that they need to live the life of their dreams. Because after all, I think uh, all of us deserve to be fully happy. Happiness shouldn't be a goal. It's your right. And so uh, we want to make sure that people know that they can, no matter what has been gone, going on up until this point, transform and change the trajectory of their life and really embrace uh, a life that is full of joy, happiness, and wisdom. And so, John, you've had the opportunity to meet a lot of... Uh world changers, uh, change agents, top influencers. I'd love to ask you a two-part question. One is, what is, do you think is the best advice you've ever been given and why? Uh, and then the flip side of that, and I probably should just ask the first and let you think about the second, but the second part, I guess, is what's the biggest mistake you've ever made and what did you learn from it? So I know that's two separate questions, really. Uh, first, oh first boy, question. Corey's <laughs> turning up the heat, you guys. He is turning up the heat quickly. Uh, I think, the best advice I was ever given, Corey, was probably by my uncle. He actually didn't, uh, married my aunt, wonderful man, built a, a massive empire uh, in the industrial paper space. And he always told me that, to make sure that you provide the most excellent service to the customer. Respect for the individual, but outstanding service to the customer. And he actually taught me something, which I implement and use today. And I've used it to build almost pretty much all the relationships that I built all over the world with so many uh, wonderful industry leaders and influencers is what I call, he called it little things for big buyers. I call it little things for big connections. It's what is that little thing that you can do that is important to Corey that will really make an impact on his life. And, I, and I've used that uh, over and over again, Corey, to establish the relationships I built. Why? Because so many people, when you're, uh, when they're at that top level, when they have the money, the fame and the accolades, they have everybody coming at them and always wanting something from them. It's very rare that you find the person willing to do something without any expectation. Yes, you would love maybe a relationship, a mentorship, something from it. But it's the ability to do something that's going to make an impression on somebody's life, leave a smile on their face without anything in return. 
That's truly, I think, giving from a place of unconditional love. The biggest mistake I think I made was the what's in it for me. Having a, a scarcity mindset, not understanding how the universe works, how the art of goal creation works and goal achievement, and being self-centered, self-focused on what can I get from this because I was so uh, focused on short-term gain rather than long-term relationship and value, Corey. And I think that comes with maturity. It comes with awareness. It comes with surrounding yourself with the right kind of people and with the right kind of information, the kind of stuff that you teach on your program. And so I would say that was my biggest mistake was that short-sightedness about the, I got to get this quick, not understanding that I could move from a place of confidence, calmness, and clarity, knowing that supply was infinite and, and I can, I am fully abundant. I want to ask you, I'll continue down this theme of advice. Uh, this question about being on a plane, seated next to a stranger. So you're on a plane, you're seated next to a stranger. They lean over and say, hey, I'm just starting my journey. Do you got any advice for me? And I just say it as plain as that, because it could be somebody that knows you, doesn't know you, a stranger, what have you. But what do you think you might tell them if somebody said, do you got any advice for me? Uh, I would I would actually give them four words, Corey. I would just say to them, what do you want? Uh, I would say, what do you really want? Not what you think you can get. But what is it that you truly would love to do if you were not to worry about how things were going to happen? If you just closed your eyes and you started to dream again and you had to write down something that you would truly love to do, what would that be? And I think most people, if they most people don't spend time thinking, Corey, right? They, uh, uh, and if they do, they set very small goals. Uh, I would encourage that person, right? Start to dream again. Use your imagination, the greatest gift that we have. And then what is it that you really want? And then set a goal. You have to have a target. Uh, but goal, let's go after big goals. Let's go after the things that we've never done before. The purpose of a goal is to cause you to grow. It's not to get something. It's to cause you to grow, to bring out something inside of you that you didn't even know was there. And so that's what I would tell them. I have one last unofficial question. Um, sure. My official one is simply how we can learn more. I'll give you a heads up. Uh, but sure. uh, you can talk to the having a coach if you want. But I just wanted to ask you as a final main question. You talked about psycho, psycho cybernetics. Uh, that's been mm -hmm. mentioned this week alone three times. I just uh, ordered it because I only read a piece of it years ago and never went back. So I've heard it so much. I'm like, there's a reason why I'm hearing it. So I ordered it yesterday. Yes. Um, but I'm going to ask you outside of that book, because I'm sure it's one on the mm -hmm. list. What's a mm -hmm. book that's changed your life that you recommend to other people? I just reached over and grabbed it, Corey. Uh, if you have not read this book, The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, uh, I read this daily. And this was written around 19, early 1900s. Uh, it, it is called The Power of Awareness, and Neville Goddard talks about, in that book, living from the end, seeing yourself with your wish fulfilled, but living it in the present tense, knowing that you don't have to hurry up and get anywhere, Corey, that you're already there. And he, one of my favorite chapters is the chapter number three on power of assumptions. Ask yourself as you go through the day, what, are, what assumptions are you making about yourself, your life, what you want, and what you're doing? Uh, one of the other things, I mentioned self-image and... Uh, that is a phenomenal book, Corey. You're going to love that. But the other thing is, is a word called paradigms, Corey. We have these mental habits that are habitual. We have to work to override those, right? And change, change how we do things. And so uh, one of the things that we need to do is study, is to uh, study the right information. School gave us tons of knowledge and information, but it wasn't, it didn't teach us how to think. It didn't teach us how to create a better self-image. didn't teach us how to set and achieve goals. It didn't even teach us how to override paradigms to earn money. And so when you study the right information, listen to people like you, Corey, and, and study psycho-cybernetics, read the power of awareness, and there's only two ways to change those paradigms. And I don't know anyone who's done it, Corey. Uh, I know you have coaches. I have a coach. But it's constant repetition of studying the same thing over and over again with elite-level coaching. The only other way is, a, is an emotional impact, which is usually negative. So it is finding somebody who can help push you to bring out of you and hold you accountable, which is what we do, and I know that's what you do as well. And help you achieve the life of your dreams. We're all in this together, Corey. And so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, 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 if I, I don't want to leave the, the screen because it looks weird to go grab it, but I have, uh, I have both of two of Neville's books for sure that I can think of okay. off the top of my head. That's one of them. But the other, correct me if I'm wrong, another one's At Your Command, right? Is that another one of his books called At Your at Command? Your, at Your Command, but At Your Command. But my other favorite one of his is Feeling is a Secret. So I'll just give you a little quick little hint. It's once you get your goal, you guys, once you know and live from the from the end, live with the wish fulfilled, it's not enough just to have that goal. You have to get emotionally involved. So feeling really is the secret. 
you have to wake up with that burning desire uh, that you love what you're going after. Yeah, it should scare you a little bit, but it should really excite you. And if it doesn't, then maybe you have the wrong goal. So yeah, I'm glad you have a, he's one of my favorites, Gordon Goddard. Well, uh, Demo, one of one of the people we both know, yes. I introduced me to him. He said, have you ever heard of Neville? And uh, I said, what's a Neville? I had no idea. And I feel crazy not now, <laughs> not knowing who he was. Uh -huh. So of course I went out and assumed, I bought four books, I think. Uh, but the two that I remember uh, are the one we were talking about, the awareness one, and then the at your command. Those are the two that I remember. I'm wondering now if I have the other one, the feeling yeah. one. Uh, but yeah, I, I love Feeling that. Feeling is the secret. Feeling is the secret. Uh, I, what, I, what I love about that, John, is it's also the secret to the secret. You know, whenever I talk to people that were in the movie The Secret, uh, I ask, what do they think it could have added to it? Because there were a lot of people that were confused by how to how to manifest. That's what I think was missing. The actual two things. One is the law of action, actually taking action. Uh, but mm -hmm. the second one, I think, was what you're yeah. talking about, which is it's one thing to say, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. But if your subconscious in your head goes, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not. That's going to be a hard battle. But if you can truly find a way to feel it, like Neville talks about, I think that's the thing. It's like an extra level you have to go to to actually feel it. So I just like mm -hmm. that you mentioned that because I think that yeah. was what was missing. No, I, I agree 100%, Corey. I agree 100%. Um, but John, and I promise. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was going to tell you, my, my dear friend uh, and mentor, he just passed this year, you know Bob Proctor very well, Bob Absolutely. Bob said, and he often thought that there was going to be a sequel to that movie, because it did leave out the next part, is that that taking action part, taking Absolutely. action, so... Yeah, and I, I wrote uh, one of my books from a number of years ago, I literally wrote a, a section called the law of action simply because of that, because wow. I, I dived into the secret and I felt that was the part that was missing. Now I got a lot mm -hmm. from it, but because I was already partway there, but I felt for those people that started out and went, wait, okay. So I'm supposed to just wish about a motorbike with a ribbon. And then I'll wake up in the morning. It's there. And that's, you know, it was almost yeah. like a genie with a magic lamp. And, and again, uh, you still have to get up at a bed or you still have to get up off the couch. So I just, I like you mentioned that. Cause I think that that's something that if people haven't heard of Neville, that's one of the things they're going to get from it is learning the part they maybe were missing around how to create abundance and manifest. So having said all that, John, mm -hmm. we covered so much ground in about 15 minutes, uh, but I really don't yes. want to let you run without people knowing how they can reach out to you because this was such a short interview. They probably want more of John. Where would they go to get that? Like, how do they get into your world? How do they get coached by John? What does all that look like? Sure. Yeah, uh, would love for them to reach out, book a book a free call, Corey. We could talk to them and make sure that we can show them the path how to achieve their goals. So you can go to my website, uh, John Tellerico, that's J-O-N, T-A-L-A-R-I-C-O, johntellerico.com. You can follow me on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. Our Million in You Facebook group is called The Million in You. Uh, you can follow us there. We've got a lot of great information, a lot of great people that uh, share their experience, strength, and hope in there. And then, and we network with each other. Uh, and I believe, you know, we're, we're really at, ultimately at the end of the day, Corey, we're here to help support each other, right? To help push each other. We all, you know, they can all argue and disagree about the before and after, but while we're here, Let's make sure that we're doing everything we can to help each other, to love each other, to push each other and hold each other accountable. John Tellerico, a pleasure, my friend. I so appreciate you. I honor you. And with your permission, because there was never enough time for these kind of conversations, I'll call it a to be continued. Absolutely, Corey. I will do anything for you. I look forward to it. So another great interview, amazing stuff from John Tellerico. And my takeaway today is to just simply talk about what uh, John talked about in terms of Neville Goddard and what he teaches around how to actually feel what you're wanting to manifest. I really do believe, my friends, that uh, this was the component that a lot of people uh, didn't uh, realize when it came to the law of attraction and maybe why for some people it didn't serve them everything they hoped it would. I believe, first of all, as you've heard in other interviews with thought leaders, some who are in the movie around the law of attraction, that uh, a lot of people uh, maybe didn't know the steps and the actions they were supposed to take uh, or could take. But also the other side to it, and this is what I know Neville Goddard teaches, because as many in this interview, I do have a couple of Neville books myself, is you have to actually truly feel it. Like you have to find a way to even uh, allow your subconscious mind to believe that this is your birthright, if you want to say it that way, or this is what you truly deserve to manifest in your life. But again, you have to feel it. And I think that's where a challenge uh you know, proposed itself or presented itself for a lot of people is the actually feeling it. Because again, our subconscious mind, if we're not truly 
a hundred percent in the feels of it, then our subconscious mind will know that. And it will say, well, it sounds great in theory that you think you're a millionaire already, but I know the difference. And so you have to find a way to truly feel this in every, every part of your being. And so I really feel that was the takeaway from the conversation with John, uh, or at least my biggest takeaway was the, the idea that if we want to create and manifest in our life and create this abundance that we're looking for, we have to find a way to truly feel that we uh, have that which we desire versus just saying we have that which we desire. Hey everybody, so, Corey so Poirier here. Thanks so much for checking out the latest episode of The Enlightened Passenger. And I wanna thank you by giving you a gift. So if you can head over to peopleonplanes.com, again, peopleonplanes.com today, you can actually grab a copy of my top 10 insights guide. Now, when I say my top 10 insights guide, these are the top 10 insights that I've gathered at, during interviews with some of the world's top thought leaders. So in that insights guide, you're gonna find insight by the legendary Les Brown, by Lisa Nichols, by the late Bob Proctor, I believe Jack Canfield's in there as well. And these are again the insights that it took me thousands of hours and thousands of interviews to gather, and I put them all together in a top 10 insights guide that I wanna give to you. So if you go over to peopleonplanes.com, and you can grab your free copy. If you scroll down, you'll see where it says grab your top 10 insights guide. And of course, on the website, you'll also find other things like the latest episodes of the podcast itself. So thank you so much for joining us on The Enlightened Passenger. I'm Corey Poirier. Until next time.